I want to read to you this morning from the Gospel of Matthew. This picks up uh, where last week's lesson left off, following the feeding of the 5,000. And this week I'm going to read it from the message, which is Eugene Peterson's attempt to uh, rephrase Scripture in more contemporary language. As soon as the meal was finished, Jesus insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone late into the night. Meanwhile, the boat was far out to sea when the wind came up against them and they were battered by the waves. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water, and they were scared out of their wits. A ghost, they said, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Have courage. It's me. Don't be afraid. Peter, suddenly bold, said, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come ahead. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. Then he said, faint heart, what got into you? The two of them climbed into the boat And the wind died down. The disciples in the boat, having watched the whole thing, worshipped Jesus, saying, This is it. You are God's Son for sure. The Gospel of the Lord. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I was very young, and after seeing this movie, I had nightmares. In fact, each and every time this movie came on television, it absolutely terrified me. I think I've shared this with you before. Do you know what movie it was? The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, that 1966 film classic starring the late, great Don Knotts. Don Knotts portrays a small-town newspaper reporter named Luther who is looking for his big story, his big break in the newspaper business, and he spends the night in a house that is supposedly haunted, a creepy mansion full of thick dust and spider webs where a murder took place 20 years earlier. There was that creepy music on the pipe organ, its keys stained with blood. The organ mysteriously began playing all by itself in the middle of the night. There was the painting with the garden shears stabbed in the neck and blood very graphically pouring down the wall. And I still remember Don Knotts' shaky hands as he held a flashlight and searched the house. I was traumatized as a young boy by the ghost and Mr. Chicken. Let me ask you, what is it like to be scared? What does it feel like to be scared? What scares you? Does anything really frighten you? Maybe it's having more bills than you have money in the bank. Too much month at the end of the money. Maybe it's worrying about your children, perhaps even your grandchildren, and and the challenges they will face in this messy world. Sometimes I worry about that. Maybe it's a failing marriage or a difficult relationship you share with a a family member or friend. Maybe it's illness or declining health, yours or, or that of someone you love. Maybe it's the awareness of your own mortality. The thought that someday your life will come to an end. The thought of death can be really frightening, can it? In the gospel this morning, we find that the disciples are scared Very scared, scared out of their wits, it says. After feeding the 5,000, Jesus tells the disciples to get in the boat and return home so that he can have some alone time for himself. The disciples get in the boat and travel halfway across the Sea of Galilee when what happens? 
They find themselves in the middle of a terrible storm. The wind and the waves toss their little boat in every direction. Think about that. It's the middle of the night. They're in the middle of an awful storm, in the middle of a a great big sea. And I'll just bet that these men are thinking that they're going to die. They're scared, absolutely 100% terrified. And as if that isn't scary enough, they see a ghost. Really, they look out. And through all the wind and the rain, they see a a ghostly apparition making his way toward them. They must have thought, it's over. Pearly gates, here we come. Cue the creepy ghost of Mr. Chicken music. But as this shadowy, ghostly figure gets closer, they recognize who it is. It is none other than Jesus himself, incredibly, unbelievably walking on the water toward their boat. To these disciples who were fearing for their lives, Jesus says, Have courage. It's me. Don't be afraid. This is very important because in the Greek it literally says, Be confident. I am. And you know in the Old Testament that's God's name. I am. I am who I am. Peter says, Master, if it's really you, call me to come out to you on the water. And Jesus says, Peter, come on down. Well, to everyone's amazement, Peter steps out of the boat and begins walking toward Jesus on the surface of the water. Peter himself is now walking on water, but then Peter does a little reality check. He looks down and sees the water churning beneath his feet, and he begins to sink. Kind of like when Wile E. Coyote runs off the edge of a cliff and looks down. Do you remember that? As he's splashing about in the water, Peter cries out, Master, save me. Help me, Jesus. And Jesus extends his hand, lifts Peter up and says, What got into you, Peter? Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? The gospel says that the disciples who witnessed all of this worship Jesus saying, Yes, you really are God's son. You're God's son for sure. My friends, the centerpiece of this story is found in the words of Jesus who says, Have courage. I am. Don't be afraid. As one commentator remarks, by saying this, by invoking the divine name of I am, Jesus attempts to calm their fear by identifying God's presence in the midst of the storm and even more, God's presence in Jesus' own being. God is with them in the flesh. God is with them in the flesh. You see, when we feel scared or frightened, when we feel thrashed about by the storms of life, we can get caught up in the terror of the wind and the waves, or we can look up confidently and know that God is present with us, even in the midst of the storm. In those stormy times, whenever we feel frightened, whenever we're scared out of our wits, Jesus speaks to us. He speaks to you and to me, and He says, Have courage. I am. Don't be afraid. Tech Sample is a well-known and now-retired professor at St. Paul's School of Theology in Kansas City. A few years ago, he faced a horrible tragedy in his family when his, his son was killed in a car accident after someone ran a stop sign. In reflecting on that experience, Professor Sample says that he was both surprised and grateful to discover that his faith didn't collapse like a house of cards. Instead, his faith gave him the ability to survive the grief, the shock, the loss, and to do so without blaming God or even blaming the man who killed his son. I preached on this text from Matthew earlier in the year as we went through the E100 series. In that sermon, I quoted a Lutheran pastor In Colorado, Nadia Bowles-Weber, who concludes a very powerful story of hers with these words. She says, we want to go to God for answers, but sometimes what we get is God's presence. You know, when bad things happen to us, a lot of times we're searching for answers, but what God gives us instead is Himself, His presence in the midst of that difficult time. 
Last weekend, I managed to locate a long-lost friend on Facebook, someone I hadn't spoken with in 27 years. His name is Scott, and he's a bit younger than me. Uh, he's also much better looking, <laughs> former Marine. He's now 44 years old and lives in New Hampshire, and last time I saw him, he was a teenager. Last time I saw him was at his older brother's wedding, which happened to be the very first wedding I performed as a minister. Well, after accepting my friend request, Scott immediately gave me his phone number, and I called him up on Saturday evening. Even though it's been nearly three decades since we've talked, he very quickly opened up his heart and soul nonstop and began filling me in on his life and all that's happened to him through the years. Besides some of the facts about where he's lived and, and what he's been up to, he also told me of a painful 30-year estrangement from his father and their very recent and emotional reunion. He's 44 and he spent 30 years without the presence of his father in his life. He told me how his marriage had recently fallen apart. His wife's drinking finally became a problem he could neither live with nor tolerate. He said that really they hadn't had much of a marriage for the past five or six years, but he, he thought they should stay married for the sake of the children. And as it turned out, that just didn't work. And he told me about his 15-year-old son, of whom he is immensely proud, and his 18-year-old daughter, whom he deeply loves, but is also greatly concerned because of her mother's influence and the fact she just dropped out of high school in her senior year. Uh, at one point, Scott, he, his origins are in Chicago. He's still got kind of a Chicago accent. At one point, he said, you're a priest now, right? He was born and raised Catholic. I said, well, actually, I'm a United Methodist pastor. I don't think he knows the difference, and I doubt he's been in church for years. Then his voice got kind of hushed, almost like he was telling me a secret. He said, he said you know what? When I was going through all that trouble in my marriage, when I was going through hell and feeling so low, I started talking to him. <laughs> I started talking to Really, I started talking to him. Uh, he seemed as surprised as anybody. And he said, I believe everything happens for a purpose. And I don't agree with that, but I didn't argue with him. Nonetheless, my friend Scott was able to see that this terrible and difficult time in his life from which he is still emerging is forging him into a stronger, happier, and even healthier human being. And although it seems apparent he has no real sense of faith and he probably hasn't been in a church for many years, he was experiencing God's supportive presence at a critical moment in his life. He started talking to God and gained strength from those conversations. In the midst of the storm, I really truly believe that he found God's presence in his life in a new and real way. By the way, he gave me permission to share this, and he said he had lots of other stories he could tell me as well, so stay tuned. Let me ask, are you going to sink and drown in life's problems? Or will you look beyond the wind and the rain and the storm clouds to recognize God's presence with you? To know that God is with you no matter what happens, no matter what you're going through. To gain courage from knowing that God wants to reach down and, and help you rise above the waters. This past week, Mary Goins took a group of our kids and, and some of their parents and grandparents for an outing down in Marion. And some of you may have heard that the church bus... Uh, broke down on the outskirts of Marion. So Nell and I got to play hero and to drive the other church van down and, and rescue everyone and bring them back home. As we drove down Route 37 into Marion, my eye caught a church sign by the highway. I think it was White Ash Free Will Baptist Church. It said this, When you feel like you're drowning in life, remember your lifeguard walks on water. Now, I know that's kind of hokey, but I like that. When you feel like you're drowning in life, remember, your lifeguard walks on water. My brothers and sisters, no matter what you're going through, no matter what it is that frightens you or scares you, no matter what storms may come your way, please listen for the voice of Jesus who says, Have courage. I am. Don't. Don't. 
be afraid. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, there are times when we feel so afraid and vulnerable, so helpless and alone. Sometimes the storms we face are huge and our problems seem insurmountable. Give us hope and trust and faith to recognize your presence in the midst of whatever storms or frightening circumstances we might encounter. Help us to listen for the voice of Jesus who says, Have courage, I am. Don't be afraid. In his name we pray. Amen.